Hey, this is Jeffrey with another edition of Stock Smart, the March 31st, 2021 edition. Hope you're all doing well. So we're bumping up a bit today in the market, especially in NASDAQ, which is up over 1%. We were slightly oversold on the S&P 500 oscillator yesterday, and we saw the market bump up a bit off oversold conditions. I do believe when we get towards bank earnings, we're going to see a move out of the bank stocks, which have moved over 30%, many of them, and start heading into these tech stocks, which are so oversold right now, and these NASDAQ stocks all oversold. And we're going to start seeing some movement into these oversold stocks as people get ready for the tech earnings, which will start mid-April to late April. Bank earnings usually go first week of earnings, April 15th. We're going to see those more than likely most will disappoint and the stocks are so overdone, so much money has gone into those that we'll see movement back into some of these tech stocks which are so oversold. So that's kind of the timing or what I see happening heading into when you get the the period of earnings where you start getting some catalysts. VIX is down slightly moving in the right direction, under 20 again. Again, we talked about the new normal for the VIX being around 20. When it reduces under 20, what I'm believing is happening now is we've had a massive increase in the buying of options. And this is, again, is partially due to the retail investor getting so much more involved on a daily basis in the market. And that bump up in options trading affects the VIX. So in years past, the underlying or the baseline number for the VIX was in the 10 range. And you would think volatility would be anything above 12. But now the baseline on the VIX is 20. And what we're seeing at dip under 19 where it's at today, that's an indicator to me of less option activity, which is what it is. But I also believe that the re- retail trader is less involved in the market right now. Pending home sales down 10%, real estate professionals are blaming it on limited supply. And you can see why that would happen. So as people have refinanced their homes and put a lot of money in their homes in the last year, they're like, we're not looking for a home this year. We're going to go travel. That's what people are doing. So the supply is not that great for home buyers. So home sales down 10%, and that's pending contracts. That's where they get that data from. But you can see if people have refinanced, they're like, we're sticking into it. We put a lot of money into our home in the last year. A lot of people, everyone I know, neighborhood-wise, has done something, whether it's just backyard improvement in the last year, or they're adding an addition or remodeling in their home. That's been great, but we're also seeing, too, and there, there is a demand or a need or a shortage for homes. We're seeing the cost of building homes going way up. At the same time, we're seeing interest rates increase. So that's really getting more expensive to buy a home. And again, right now, from a year ago, the cost to buy a home, let's say a million dollar mortgage, that would cost the average purchaser about $1,000 more today in a mortgage payment than it did last year. It's because of the move in interest rates. And again, the interest rates of the treasury do not directly impact the interest rates of of the bonds for your mortgage. Those are done, but they compete against each other. It's the same kind of competition. So people who would invest in the collateralized debt obligations, which are attached to home, a home ownership, they compete in the regular bond market or the 10-year note. And so that's why they kind of move along the same lines, although they're they're not tied together at all in any way. So keep in mind too, in home building, all the hard materials have gone way up, lumber, was 300 a pallet, now 800 plus a pallet. That's a futures trader. That's not a, if you like go buy at Home Depot or your lumber yard. You're probably even paying more at the lumber yard. Copper, all the raw materials for building have gone up. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for subscribing and hit the subscribe button below. Appreciate it. Big announcement coming on the show. Let's start talking about sports a bit more. It's a big NFL contract. NFL contract under TV deals. NFL extending the season to 17 games. Yeah, NFL Players Association has not been kind to the players in doing this. And it gets into a whole bunch of questions. And we're going to do a special show on this coming up. Uh, and so stay tuned for that. But we do have a big announcement coming probably in the next week. And I'm really excited about it. And we'll tell you about it here on the show. Ten-year note is flat today. So you have, you have neutral buying and selling of the bond. Or the ten-year note, I should say. Let's do a little bit. Uh, take a look at a stock. Stock We're going to do the marketing language here, as we always do here on the show. We engage in the designing, distributing, and retail of athletic apparel and accessories. The company operates through the following business segments. Company-operated stores and direct-to-consumer. 
They give you a lot to go on there. Obviously, it's a retail company and they do apparel. Athletic. Okay, who is it? it? Well, the number one company, right? And this started like as a yoga brand, but now it's an everyday brand. Lululemon. Had really good earnings and just got decimated or pounded on it. Stock sits around 303. Off great earnings, dropped 4.36%. The company was very, in its future kind of outlook, the company was very conservative. You see the stock is a high price earnings ratio, about 75. You know, market cap is about 40 billion for this company. It is a fantastic company. People wear these pants all the time. They have pants now that you can wear that almost look like suit pants. But it really started like as a yoga brand. And their clothes are well made. I am a user. I've purchased many of their clothes and items for yoga. And and they last forever. The dyes they use, all the production of the, the, the clothing is the highest of quality. Their stock is just suffering from sort of the belief that this is a stay-at-home stock because everyone was in comfort where in the last year. You know, you see those joke videos where people get up from their chair, they're doing a Zoom meeting, they get up from their chair, and all of a sudden it shows that they have shorts on or some kind of casual pants on with a, a necktie and a shirt. And that's kind of funny, and that has been going on. And so this stock is suffering because it's, it's thought of as a COVID stock, and it's going down and dropping. Now, it isn't a free fall. Like, if you're looking at this in a technical from a technical aspect or a technical trader, you're not going to like the chart because it's making such a negative pattern. It's got a lot of support where it sits, though. It doesn't have far to fall if it's going to be caught, probably in the 280 range. If it breaks support there, you could see the stock go all the way to 245, which would not be great. That's where its last support was. But it's been in this range, this 290 to 390 range, for a big period of time, six, eight, nine months. So that's where it's most of its support resides. So you would think of the worst of it is probably done. And if you're interested in Lululemon, you might want to take a bite here on a stock that had extremely good earnings, extremely doing well. Retail stores are going to be open more. You would have to think that although, yeah, we bought a lot of leisure wear or athletic leisure wear in the last year, you would think the stock would still do well because the retail malls are opening and people are shopping. And in in past, what you happen really during COVID that I noticed is that selection and variety went down. And I did the same thing because I'm not going to the grocery store. So I'm buying the same 15 or 20 things. So if you're a new product person and one of my friends has a food company and the way that he gets people to, and I would have hated to have a business like this in the last year. Well, the way that you get people to try your product is you go and you demo it at Costco. And he had products in Costco and did very well with them. But you would go and you would open a table at Costco. Now in the last year, you haven't been able to do any of that. So new products did not get to be shown or displayed. Now you can imagine like a company like Lululemon has a bunch of designs, but if I'm there and I've bought this one type of pant, I'm probably going to buy a similar type of pant. And I know I do the same thing with groceries because now I would buy a whole bunch of different things if I was in the store. But since I'm buying online, I'm only buying the things that I know I like and that I've bought before. So I think selection has probably been minimized. And I think once you go to the store and you start seeing it, it'll open up selection again. So I think this stock's probably overdone. And I think that it, you know, it, being conservative was great by the, by the CEO that they, they guided forward in a conservative manner. Stock's overdone being sold off. Interesting company, performing very well, and will benefit again, even though it was a COVID stock, will benefit again from the return to people shopping in malls. So I got a question from the Stephanie. Again, investor. thank you for the questions. You can send them to Jeffrey at JeffreyCamus.com. Appreciate all the feedback. Stephanie wants to know about buybacks. She said, you know, you talked about stock buybacks. And you can explain and maybe discuss some companies that are going to do buybacks this year. I'm going to go right off Investopedia to keep this really simple. A stock buyback is also known as a, a share repurchase. It occurs when a company buys back its shares from the marketplace with its accumulated cash, so cash on hand. It's a way for a company to reinvest in itself. And the repurchased shares are absorbed by the company. And the number of outstanding shares, which again, creates more value for the shareholder, is reduced. And because there are fewer shares on the market, the relative ownership of each investor goes up. And so that's essentially what a buyback is. You know, there's a couple of ways that they do it. They could do a tender offer, which means they'll submit uh, an offer to people who own shares. And they'll say, well, we'll give you an offer at this price and we'll buy back the shares. And then it'll find the right mix of shares to buy back at the lowest cost. And then there's open market where a company will just buy, just like you, the average investor will buy shares on the open market and buy them back and absorb them. 
And the companies buy them back for different reason. They want to improve their financial ratios. Price to earnings goes up, metrics like that. They also want to, you know, drive shareholder value. You know, so when companies say we're doing buybacks, it's a sign of strength. It's like when you look at companies, one of the things you really want to look at is insider buying and selling. When very few insiders own parts of companies, and that's why we talked about Rocket, which I love, Rocket Companies, most of the companies owned by the original founders. It means they're vested and invested in this wholeheartedly. And generally, you know what, we can make the assumption that if, if it's important to you, you'll invest in it. And that's where you see you know, people's drive and their motivation. So let's go look at a couple, a couple companies. We did talk about Tencent Music, which is going to have a billion dollar buyback this year. So let's look at a few companies you may want to be interested in purchasing. There are rules to when companies can do buybacks. There's quiet periods and different things, depending on when they're heading into earnings or out of earnings. Companies that are, are going to do buybacks this year, Walmart, they're going to buy back approximately $20 billion, which is about 5% of their shares. So that's a company you may be interested in. eBay, they're going to buy back about 10% of their shares, or $4 billion, in the open market. Bank of America, about 1% or $3 billion worth of shares. Altria, McKesson, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, all going to buy back parts of their shares. We know Oracle's been doing it. That's the only reason the stock's been moving, to be honest. It's a morbid old technology stock that people don't want to be invested in. But that company is also a, a known buyback company. Microsoft buys back, buys back a lot of their stocks. Columbia Sportswear is buying back $400 million or 7% of their stock outlay. And what you want to do is percentage of shares that are going to be purchased. And one that got my attention right away are companies like you know, eBay that's going to do 10%. That's a big amount. So you can see that stock can totally be boosted by the buyback process in the open market. So that makes the investment a little bit better and it'll be more st stable in down periods and time. So that's something you may want to consider. So hey, thanks for listening to the show. Appreciate all the comments and all the feedback. And we'll see you again next time on Stock Smart. <music>